Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to some more FM 2022. We are playing with the Wilstermen and we are on our way into the uh, third season with them um, in the Bolivian second division. But before we get there, we have got some business to talk about. If you do not like pre-season stuff like looking at new players, tactical choices and all that kind of jazz, you can just jump right over this and uh, and, and of course get into the uh, new season, which we are actually just in front of. But I want to talk about all the new players and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, if you like that kind of stuff, well, then stick around because I think it's going to be a long one at least. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, 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 the pre-season is over. It's it hasn't been as good as last one or the last one, I would say. Neither in results, in goals conceded, or how far I got with the tactic. Now, with that saying, and when I'm saying that, I have done a lot with the tactics. I mean, I have changes in every single game, and that's why I'm saying it didn't go so well because I didn't really nail it before the season's gonna start. You know what I mean? I didn't really. There could be some slight changes yet to come inside the season, which is never a great thing to see. I like to do most of my changes in the preseason, so I have a really solid tactic going in here. But there could be a couple of things where I'm thinking, I already have one more for the next game, right? I already have done one more from the previous game here into the, the first uh, game here against the Firo Kareel, which we're going to play in the next episode. Right, I just want to mention that and then we can get into now looking at the new players, actually all the players that is. So here is the squad depth and uh, I like to come in here and show you guys how it actually all looks and where we are strong, where we are possibly weak and all that kind of jazz, right? Um, and I think we're just looking at the players here to begin with and then we will move more into tactical things after that. So, to begin with, we're gonna, we're gonna start with the goalkeepers. I already told you in the last, maybe the last episode, or maybe the last one before that, that we were getting a new goalkeeper already from the get-go into the new season, or into the new preseason. This guy came in, like, the 1st of January. And um, he's quite good. He's uh, he's a, he's not a bad little choice for us. He's definitely the first choice uh, goalkeeper if we compare him with... Whoops. Flores. I, I don't think there is two, thing, uh, two, two ways about it here. He's just a better overall goalkeeper, right? So he's our first choice, Pedro Henrique. Not a bad one. Um, does he have any weaknesses? Yeah, his first touch, but it's actually the best I've seen of all the, all the goalkeepers I've been looking at for a very long time. He, I mean, he's not a sweeper keeper, but I'm going to play him as a sweeper keeper. I mean, he do actually have some decent attributes otherwise as a sweeper keeper. He do have the agility and acceleration. He do have the passing, which often he will get out of the box and actually help with the, the uh, help help the central defenders out if they are um, in, 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 in trouble here. So, uh, well, at least I've seen, I've seen it a couple of times, him doing it. But he hasn't really been great. I mean, he's been bang on average, 6.7, right? So uh, even a little bit below. So he hasn't worked out too well, maybe because of his communication. I, I don't know, but he doesn't look that bad. Hopefully he will do better when we are getting into the season. The next area we are going to look at is the uh, fullback slash wingback area. Now I can already now tell that we are very, very likely to play with a wingback. So we're going to look at these three and they are, I mean, that's probably our... <laughs> Probably our strongest side, right? It's uh, it's it's it looks very very decent already here. It's current ability you're looking at right here. That looks pretty damn solid when it comes to what our assistant manager think they are. And I agree with him. We have three solid options over here. Let's take a look at Cruz first. Probably the best of the lot. Um, but they're very equal in what they can do and what they are capable of, that's for sure. But he is, uh, he's probably the best, yeah, he's probably the first choice, but I think they're gonna rotate quite a bit. I have actually trained him a little bit over the preseason here, so he can also go down and play as a diff Because I didn't really know if I was gonna go for that wingback area, right? But I think we are, I think we're going complete wingback even. So, uh, that's exciting. But yeah, he's very, very good. He's easily one of the best players in the club now. Easily. Uh, does he have any weaknesses? I would say the flair, maybe. He's not going to do anything too unexpected. But other than that, I don't really see a weakness, to be honest. Um, hmm, yeah, maybe you know that he's not... I don't know. He doesn't re really need any right foot. He's balanced person. No, I don't see any weaknesses. Not really. Marking five. Yeah, that's... 
That can that can definitely make him not. But I don't want them to mark anyway. I don't want my wingbacks to mark. Actually, that's not true. I, I, I think I have set them to mark. But yeah, if we compare him with... Actually, let's go a look of the next guy who is Fernandes. Uh, Alejandro Fernandes. Yes. Great name. Love that name. Sounds very um, uh, South American. Um... Very good acceleration. Again, not a whole lot of weaknesses here. Again, Flair is probably his weakness along with marking again. Very similar to the other guy. A little bit faster in his acceleration, of course. But again, no no big weaknesses here. Balanced personality. Pretty much spot on the same player, right? <laughs> not entirely. So let's, uh, let's, uh, let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. Where is he? How can we not compare them here? Uh, we're looking for Cruz. Oh, there he is. So yeah, they they are pretty similar, but I think I think Cruz is just slightly tiny bit better with his aerials, his technicals, his defending, his physicals, just tiny bit better. Of course the speed is a little bit lower, but overall probably Cruz is just just a little bit better than him. Tiny bit. So there we go. And the last one over here, which I actually thought would be my um he was actually my first signing. <laughs> and uh, I thought, yeah, let's get him in. He looks absolutely fantastic. And I even gave money for him. Um, I think I spent like 13k for him, which was well, th that's kind of a lot of money. Uh, but as it turns out, he's uh, he's gonna be uh, he's more a fullback than he is a wingback. So, um, but he can definitely go up here and play the wingback as well. He's probably not as much as a complete wingback. I think I'm gonna play this guy as a personalized normal wing back maybe even on defense because he's not bad in marking and tackling and all that so he's gonna be the more defensive kind of wing back that we're gonna have over there but uh, i mean having three of those guys over there i mean that's gonna be that's gonna be tricky to have to, to make them all happy about the playing time right <laughs> because i think they are all of them are important no he's also a star player and i believe the other uh, two guys is also star players I, I don't see them. Uh, I, I don't. I don't see how I can keep all three of them at the end of this season. Um, I, I, th I think one of them we have to let go because they're gonna. One of them is definitely gonna get mad uh, with playing time or not getting the playing time they deserve. But they will all get the chances. And so far, I think Cruz have been the best player, so he's probably gonna be starting in for the first game. Anyway, that is the left wing back area, and couldn't be happy about it. I mean, that's that's solid. That's very solid. The opposite side, on the other hand, is going to be uh, a fullback, likely a fullback. Um, we got three choices here. We got uh, Val Valdivia. I, I keep thinking that he's called Val uh, Valvidia, but no, it's Valdivia. He's probably our first choice over here. He is uh, not as great as the uh, the other guys on the other side, but he's okay, and he's probably our first choice over there right now. More, I wouldn't say defensive-minded, because he, he's probably going to be played as a fullback on support, so... It's, um, but he's definitely not as good as the other guys, that's for sure. But he is the best choice on the right hand side. To back him up, the same guy as last season, Ranibar. Again, not a bad choice, a little bit more going forward than the first choice we have. But yeah, I don't know how much he's gonna play, but he's probably gonna rotate with the other guy quite a lot. We could also play him as a wing back, but nah, I think again, full back here. Uh, likely on support is gonna be fine also because of tactical choices right and i'm fairly happy with him we also have a, a third choice here with rivers he's likely not gonna play a whole lot you can definitely see now that yeah the technicals they are not there for what we are the the, the play style we have very possession based play style right it's not really there uh so um yeah but anyway he's gonna be the third choice over there so that's the right hand side of our fullback area or full fullback slash wingback areas <laughs> okay here we go we have a good amount of central defenders this season we actually have six of those i do believe i'm not too sure yeah, I'm, that's one of the things i'm still war um trying to figure out this guy the first guy here he might be playing as a halfback and that's, of course, not the central t defender role. So um, I, I think we're going to skip him, but he could be playing down here. But we are going to show him when we are looking at the defensive midfielders anyway. So Jemis, we know him from last season. We don't. We can take a quick look at him. He's 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 okay. He's fe uh, he's feather good. He's feather feather good. <laughs> Rather good. Um, he's going to play uh, on the right hand side because he is only right footed. So I don't really want him to uh, play on the left hand side. But yeah, he's okay. He's uh, is he is he the best player? Maybe maybe he's the best player down there. If sec maybe except from this guy Claros here. But 
I still think we want to play him somewhere else. Uh, Raus also, we know him from last season, likely gonna play on the left hand side, but he can also play on the right hand side. So there, I, I think, I think uh, again, a decent choice here, especially when it comes to also, um, he's a little bit more technical than some of the other players we have down there and still not too slow, but you know, it's, it's uh, I, th I think our weak area is probably the central defenders. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> I thought I had done well, but uh, you know what? And then we have Fabio, who is a very big boy. He's, he's 194, 194, 84 kilo, uh, kilograms. He's, he's jumping rates of 16, heading of 8. Um, I think he has scored two goals from corners. But he, it, it's been, it hasn't been as good as I thought it would be with <laughs> this big boy in there. And but he's still, he's not too slow as well. So, but he's not very good on the ball, which is a bit of a concern, of course. So, uh, but yeah, he might be the, you know, second choice on the left hand side because this guy is probably my first choice right now, and he's even more slow. Uh, Sotomayor, yeah, Sotomayor. He might be my best choice on the left hand side right now. Um, and he's another really, really, we got two really, really big boys when it comes to our left-hand side of the central defense. It's, uh, it's nice, it's nice, and they have done okay, I would say. There is mistakes in them, but not uh, anything where I'm thinking, wow, I shouldn't play these guys. But uh, again, a little bit of a concern with the acceleration here. I've at least seen one or two goals where, yeah, that uh, he's, he's getting caught out of position and cannot keep up with the uh, attacking uh, attacking uh, whatever their attack up attacking players was so um but but again it's uh, it's a chance to take and i knew i took a chance taking these guys in because i i was thinking that if i can win the air duels then then i can probably win the games more often um because more than more than ever they tend to go over the top of us instead of trying to play through us, right? So if we can win it, win those balls in the air when they are be trying to beat us, uh, the problem is if they get in behind us, right? If they do get in behind us with a through ball, that is where these guys are not gonna help us with their height and their good jumping reach and all that. Then it's already too late. Um, and uh, what uh, we got one last guy here. He's actually one of the intakes and he's kind of the same sort of deal as the other guys. He's just a little bit better on the ball. Yeah, I think he will get some play time, but not a whole lot. 16 year old of course uh, good jumping reach decent heading uh, how tall has is he now 183 okay he actually i think he went i think he's taller now compared to last time i looked at him um strong right foot so he's probably gonna be rotating with jimis and auras for that arraus <laughs> for that right hand side of the central defense so that is our central defenders nothing really extraordinary right nothing nothing extraordinary here the defensive midfielders oh yes let's take a look at the first guy here that i mentioned down here as well claros now i want to mention him because he could very likely play in the central defense quite often when we have easy opponents but if we have hard opponents it might be this guy going up to the midfield because as we can see here he can go up and play here now I want to test this out because he, this guy is fairly good on the ball as well. So I want to test it out and I'm thinking I want to play him as a halfback up there, right? Uh, I think he can do a job like that and he can win a lot of the duels in the air as well. Uh, and also destroy their midfielders uh, quite often with tackling a 14, good aggression, fairly decent uh, physicals as well. So um, And decision making is very good so he's pretty decent on the ball trying to get it out to one of the wingers or whoever is near him, one of the central midfielders, actually. Um, so, I'm not sure where we're going to play him yet, because he's 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 kind of like that player that is our best player in both positionings. He's, he's, probably one of the he's probably one of the best central defenders we have, and he's also the best player when we are talking about real defensive midfielders, right? So, he's going to get some playtime. That's guaranteed. I'm not just not sure. Um how it develops into the season and where he's going to play the most so that's the, that's the first guy we're looking at the other two are more deep line playmaker roles right let's take a look at salastar first we know him from last season he's gonna he, he gonna of course play up here as well but we actually got a good amount of central midfielders and i think dropping him down to a deep line playmaker on support would do the world a good here uh, and i do want to in most games likely play a deep line playmaker in there um when when we have the ball a whole lot then this guy can just sit there ding it out to the wingers ding it out to whoever is gonna you know 
needed uh, <clears throat> and also be just that creative uh, vocal point in our midfield. Uh, so so that's that's the first guy, uh, of course, Salazar. And the other guy is Rochas. Uh, I, I, when I bought him, I didn't expect him to go <laughs> could probably play as a defensive midfielder. But um, he can actually play as a defensive midfielder. He's a little bit more... He's a little bit better with the tackles and the markings than uh, Salazar is. So again, he's working into... He cannot really play a halfback. I don't think so. But with the jumping reach of one and the strength of one... No. <laughs> and aggression of five. N not really. But he will do more defensive working than Salazar will. Just because of some of his numbers, right? Just because of that. So he is likely my first choice right now on that, um, on that deep line playmaker role. Because he's just also a little bit more solid, defensively speaking. Um, but yeah, he's not going to win any duels for us in the air. <laughs> That's, I can guarantee you that. But yeah, uh, and if we like try and compare them here real quickly, is he here, Salazar? We can definitely see that Rogers is better at defending. Mentally and defending is just better, right? And uh, physically also a little bit better. Speed is a little bit better. He's just getting around a little bit more uh, easy than Salazar. But where Salazar is a tiny bit better is attacking, technical and aerial. But I think overall Rojas is the first choice in that spot. Unless we need a more defensive minded player. Then it's probably going to be uh, 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 Klaros. Hard to tell who is going to be the, you know, the one that has played the most there at the, at the end of the season. Hard to tell. But well, that is our defensive midfielders. Right, so the midfielders. Oh man, the central midfielders. We got 10 of them. Well, kind of. Because some of them can also play other places. But we got quite a few. And I'm gonna use this view right here and just go by them real quickly. Because there is a lot to say. Um, so we got Rochas, who, who is also coming up here and plays maybe sometimes. Who knows if we want him. He's most, uh, mostly a Carrilero, but we're actually not playing with a Carrilero. We are actually playing with central midfielders. Uh, on both spots in the midfield. So uh, have that in mind when you see them. So I think the first choice here on the right-hand side is likely this guy. Cab Cabrera? Cab Cab Carabera? Probably need a... Uh, we should probably... You know what? Let's go in and rename him because I, I would I would butcher that every single time. Set nickname. Um, mm, Cap. Daniel Cap. Right? That's very easy to say. So this guy is, uh, yeah, he's pretty good. He's, he's, he's pretty good. He is likely going to play on the right-hand side because he is not really having a good left foot. But uh, he's very, very quick. So far in the uh, preseason, he's been doing really good. Um, he got a, a couple of really uh, good trades here. Gets forward whenever possible. Knocks ball past the opponent. Usable, very usable with his physicals. He's been doing really well. And he could also go up and play the AMC role. But right now, I think, I'm thinking more the central midfielder role for him is uh, the way to go. Um, he's almost playing like a Masila, right? He's, he's, he's drifting out wide with the ball and then finding good uh, spots to open up their uh, defense with uh, his uh, half-decent passing, I guess, and, and also work rate. It's uh, El Flair, actually. That, that's, the, that's the one I was looking for. He's a little bit unpredictable, that's, and that's, that's good to have. So uh, that's the first guy. And the next one, if we come in here again, is Patilla. I think Patilla is likely going to be, again, playing on the right-hand side. He's a bit, little bit more well-rounded in his attributes. Um, but his passing is fantastic. Uh, along with, of course, his technique, first touch. Work rate, again, really high. I want that work rate high on my uh, central midfielders. But uh, he doesn't have the flair, so he's not as good going forward, doing the un unexpected. But uh, yeah, a decent little player, probably second choice on the right-hand side in our central midfield. Next up is uh, Bello. He is also likely going to be play playing on the right-hand side, so third choice. But, you know, it there are going to be a lot of rotation, so I'm not too worried about it. But he's definitely third choice. He's, uh, he's a little bit better on the ball. He got some really good first touch, passing, technique. Uh, vision is really good. Decision-making is really good. So he's almost more like an advanced playmaker than a deep-line playmaker. And definitely not a central midfielder, but I am going to use him as a central midfielder. But he is likely more advanced playmaker than anything, I would say. Actually, let's see if that's true. Uh, he doesn't have the off the ball, but other than that, he's he's dribbling as well. But I don't want them to dribble anyway. But yeah, he's, he's probably more an advanced playmaker type than central midfielder or deep-line playmaker. Just a different option, right? So that's, uh, that's the third guy on the right-hand side. Then we got a couple of choices on the left-hand side. Um, 
uh, it's 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 uh, right now it's still tricky uh, because uh, was it Cap? No, that was one of these guys that could play on the left. Was it Pandila? No. So Salazar can go up and play that role, right? He's left-footed. He can go up and play that left-hand side central midfield role. And same with Rochas. He can also go up there and play the central um, midfield role on the left. The, one of those two are likely going to be playing up there. Likely, because they are left-footed or uh, half-decent on the left foot, right? We also have a couple of other choices. I believe it was Pass. Yeah, Pass could go down there. We know him from last season. He did quite well in the AMC role. And he will probably as well play up there uh, this season from time to time. But he's definitely not our first choice in any of those roles, right? But he, I think he can come down and do a half-decent job on that central midfielder role on the left-hand side. Uh, rotating quite a bit. And we also got another guy here called... Where is he? Uh, it was actually Melgor I was thinking about. Also, fairly good uh, left foot, but we don't have a you know a, um, a very strong left-footed central midfielder, so that's a you know a little bit of a concern. He's also more a Masila type. Not exactly what I'm looking for on the left-hand side, but it's it's all right. And um, we also got Hamosa, another loan deal. He can also play in there. He hasn't really done well when he has, but he, again, strong left foot. So there is a lot of rotation option on that central midfield role. Um, definitely a lot of that. We also got this guy, Savetra, another AMC who could come down and play here. But again, it's likely not going to happen. What we will see is likely the top guys here. Not not Claris. I don't, I don't actually expect Claris to go up and play there. We can take him out. Oh, that's that's annoying. <laughs> that didn't. So it's likely going to be one of these five guys up here going to play it, right? All right, let's move on. So we got a little bit of an odd situation here because... From the get-go of this season and how how I started with a tactic was that I thought I would play with a midfielder. Well, that that didn't really work out for me. Uh, a midfielder on the left-hand side, that is. That didn't really work out and it ended up being a wingback, right? So I do have a couple of players that can play over here. Adrisola can play over here. And he's an early loan deal I got in because he looked really good as a defensive winger, which I was looking for at that moment. Now... He could still play that role, absolutely, but we are right now not really playing with that um, on that position. Now, what he can do is go back and play a wing back, but he's definitely the fourth choice. But it's a little bit of a, you know, it's just a little bit. And I mean, they are free deals. I mean, we don't pay anything for them. But he's probably not gonna play, get the playtime that he likely would deserve to get. Um, so yeah, you know, it's a little bit concerning, right? A little bit concerning. And and the same goes for Hamosa here who is also a midfielder on the left-hand side. At least that's what I brought him in to be. But he can also play in the MC role, and he can also play on the right-hand side as a winger, as a backup, if we really need him to. So we got two players that is a little bit on the, what should we say, fringe side. <laughs> they, they're not really that needed right now in, in our uh, formation. So, yeah, that's, uh, that, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. So moving on, AML. We're not going to play with any AMLs. I thought you would probably know that already now, but I just needed to say that. So, moving up to the attacking midfield, um, AMC role here. We got Rosas, who... I still don't know about this guy, man. He has been absolutely piss poor in the uh, preseason. Ah, it's, it's, it's not as bad as I thought it was, but it's still not good. 6.64. Goal scored 2. He looks fairly good. Um, if there are... Two, no, three. There are three things I want to mention here, and that's also likely why he's not good. His off the ball, his determination, and his strength. Those three attributes is usually something I don't want to see that low, <laughs> especially on that role. Um, because he's getting pushed around in there. He's just getting pushed around, right? He's, he's a small guy, he's getting pushed around. He's not really. He, he needs space to work. Uh, he got the acceleration and, and pace to do it. He got the finishing and composure and concentration to get some goals. But if he's getting pushed around in there, he's going to have a bad game. If they're going to mark him tight, he's done for. <laughs> he's, he's just done. Um, he do have the flair to be a little bit unexpected. But still, if this guy's getting marked, yeah, it's, it's not going to be a good day for him then. But um, yeah, so far, I wouldn't even call him the first choice uh, just because he hasn't really been that great. Uh, so, uh, who is the first choice up there? I don't, I don't know. 
Honestly, I don't know. It might be him. It might be him, or it could be. Uh, we could even bring Cab up there, like we know he can. He can play up here. He's been. He's been fairly good in this uh, spot, actually. Again, um, he's just uh, a little bit harder to push around, right? He got the all of the ball of ten. Strength is four. That's at least not a one. <laughs> so and also the composure of nine. So it's. Um, I don't know. I don't know who we're gonna play up there the most. Uh, I'm, I'm still, and we got Pass. We got Terrasses who can play in there. Sini, I don't want to play Sini in there. Uh, and and uh, yeah, you can see there is something funky about Sini here being green. So we can we can get into that in a moment when we are looking at the wingers again. But uh, and we also got the guy uh, Savetra here who can also play up here, youngster. Um, not 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 that good. He's again fourth, fifth choice, whatever. So I think it's between Wasas, Cap, and Terrasses, and maybe Pass. So, uh, I hope Rosasas is going to work out because he's definitely the best player in that spot. But it could be hard for him if he's getting marked every single game, which I am concerned that he will do. So, uh, yeah, that's the AMC. On the right wing, we have a couple of options as well, of course. We got Sini, we got Pena, Melgor, and Martinez. So, quite a lot of new names there, of course. Uh, well, only two actually. We got the other two, you know. Sini, well, you know him from last season. He's 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 really good. Now, what I want to say about this guy is that he actually left the club. <laughs> we got 39k for him, uh, but in that contract, or what? Well, with that transfer uh, came a loan back deal. So, well, we do have him for another season. But like I said, if someone was coming in for some my player for a decent amount of money, I would probably let them go. And getting him back for another season, it was a you know pretty easy call here. 39k right now, sure, <laughs> with a loan back option. Absolutely, I'll take that. Thank you kindly. Moving on. <laughs> Pena is... Uh, I don't know how much he's going to play over there uh, this season. I mean, Sini is definitely first choice, 100%. But Pena is, of course, a very, very decent uh, second or third choice. Um, we also got, I think, second choice right now is probably this guy, Malgor, who is another loan deal coming in. He's been fairly good in the uh, preseason. And uh, I think he, I, I don't know, I think, I, I still like Pena more in that spot. But uh, he's definitely, him and Pena is is enough to make sure that we don't really struggle in that area. So that's, that's pretty good. We also got this guy, Victor Martinez, who is, uh, yeah, he's, a, he's an interesting one as well. He's a, he's a bit older, he's 36. I don't often get old guys in, also because of our... Uh, club culture and all that, uh, but he, he's more a striker, right? He's he's a poacher. He's a slow, slow moving poacher. <laughs> but he got some really good finishing, composure, first touch, heading is even rather good, technique and all those the flair off the ball. He, he he's 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 still fairly good. I don't know how much he's gonna play, but you know he can also play over here. And I would play him probably as an advanced playmaker or maybe maybe as a winger. I don't know, but he's not very quick. That's the problem, right? So, but he's like fourth choice over there. Uh, but yeah, probably more like uh, the, the... He's probably going to be playing more in, in the striker area. And when it comes to strikers, we got a couple of different choices now. Um, I'm not sure Hurana is anymore the first choice, to be honest. <laughs> not too sure about that. I think Pena might be the first choice because I really do want that pressing forward up there. And he do absolutely fit that bill. The problem with him is that he doesn't have a whole lot of goals on him when he's playing as a pressing forward for some reason. But that's the thing about the pressing forward. They don't seem to get a whole lot of goals anyway. Um, Hurana did get a lot of goals last season and that's of course advantage to him. We do also have two other options. It's Martinez, we just looked at. It depends. It depends on the teams we're playing against. But he could definitely have... I mean, if we're really looking for that, uh, you know, goal uh, against some easy, easy opponents where we just can put him up there and wait for him to get the ball into him, he's going to score uh, quite a few then. Uh, we also got another one here who is a, a more physical kind of beast, right? <laughs> but he do have the finishing and composure to still finish them off. But he's not a pressing forward. This guy is someone we want to play when we are not really looking to pressure them too hard but instead trying maybe to beat them on the counter or something like that then this guy would be fairly good with his flair and his uh, determination off the ball is also fairly good just a very poachery-esque 
kind of player instead of a pressing forward. So I think mostly I want to play Pena because I do want to play a pressing forward against most teams. But sometimes against really good opponents, we could like uh, like this guy Chuki uh, play, and sometimes for for a rotation option, we could play Martinez play. And I don't know about Hurana anymore. I I mean he's uh, I don't know I don't know. I, he, he probably deserves to have the spot over some of the other guys, but we we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, he he probably deserves it because of all his goals last season. But we'll see how it goes. That was all the players, all the... I mean, I haven't shown you all the outs and ins, but you, you, you have a fairly good idea about where we are strong, where we are weak, uh, and what kind of players we have in the club now. So uh, let's take a look at the tactics now. That's, uh, that's the next big deal in this episode, of course. And as you can see, we have a new tactic. It is called, uh, again, high press, uh, but it's a 3 2 2 2 1. <laughs> At least that, because it's a 3 2 2 2 1. But of course, that's not how it looks like inside the match, uh, the match engine. But still, that's, that's what I'm calling it. So, um, well, it's, uh, let's, let's, let's take a look out over here. We are on mentality. We are going one up. We are, uh, we're playing attacking. We're playing on attacking now. We do have a better team, a lot better team than last season. And, um, I think we can play a little bit faster around, especially in the midfield with all those good first touches and passing abilities. We can probably play a little bit faster as well. So I'm not too concerned about them doing things faster in there. Um, in possession, we are playing fairly wide, pass into space, which is also a new one. And we're focusing down both the, both the right and left. Um, anything else here? Work the ball into the box. Low crosses is still in there. We do not play for set pieces anymore. We do not dribble less, uh, or we do dribble less, sorry. And we are also having a little bit more creativity freedom here. I'll be more expressive in our um, creativity when we are going forward. So a couple of changes here for sure in uh, in terms of last season's tactic. In transition, pretty much the same, except from I'm um, distributing to the center backs because we do play with a fullback really, f or not a fullback, a complete wingback really far up. And the other two uh, that we're gonna play on the other fullback area are not really that great on the ball anyway. So we are gonna distribute to the center backs here. And that's about it for the transition. And in here, it is exactly the same. Nothing happened in the out of position. So that is the overall tactic in terms of team... Uh, what is this called? Is that called the team tactics? And then you have, the, have all the personalized uh, positionings and all that. So let's go them over them really quickly. Uh, one of the big changes, of course, we got a sweeper keeper. So yeah, sweeper keeper. Cool. On support. Uh, he's going to help out with the position sometimes. And sometimes he's also going to get out of his goal real quickly, which is great to see. Fullback on the right hand side is pretty much the same as the inverted wingback last season. Not a whole lot different here. Dribble less, shoot less often, cross less often. I don't want this guy to cross. Uh, standard uh, passing of directness. I, I, I tend to see that he needs to go a little bit longer because otherwise he doesn't really find his marks. And then he's going back to the Weaver Keeper. So I want him to take... Uh, I guess that's a risk. I guess that's a risk actually playing with passing directness of standard here on him. Whole position. I don't want him. I don't want him to get too far forward. I don't need him to. Uh, Mark Tyler tackle harder. Pretty, uh, pretty standard here. Well, I, I don't know if it's standard, but it's standard to me. Central defender, same as last season. Take fewer risks. Close down less. This guy, on the other hand, is a little bit different. He got to stay wider in as well. And there is, of course, a really good reason for that. That is because this complete, completed wing back is not here when we are in position. Never is. <laughs> because we do play with a complete wing back. And he got shoot less often and tackle harder. That's about it because he already got all the other presets in there. So don't really need a whole lot of uh, instructions on him. And he will, of course, get up there. He will he will get up there. So that leaves space for the central defender over here. We do have a halfback. I'm still testing the, this area. I, I Again, I think some games it's going to be a halfback. Some games it's going to be a deep line playmaker. What the halfback will do is drop in between the central defenders. Well, there's going to be a few holes now when the central defender is going to go wide. So he will be very far back in terms of possession. He will also be fairly far back in terms of out of possession. Um, we will see how that works, but uh, I hope it will work. What uh, kind of instructions do I have on him? Pass it shorter, tackle harder, mark tighter. Yeah, that's about it. Then we got two central midfielders in here. We have seen that before. I think I did it in the first season where we I actually played with two. Did we play with two central midfielders? I think we did. Um, again, I'm not too sure about the roles in here. We could have a deep line playmaker up here if we are going to play with the halfback down here. So this guy, central midfielder on support, could be a deep line playmaker in the future. But right now he's a central midfielder uh, on support. 
He got quite. He's running wide with the ball. I want them to do that, even with a complete wing back over there. This one is the one. This is the spot with the halfback that I'm most concerned about, right? Um, that, this is where I'm still trying to figure it out. So mark tighter, tackle harder, run wide with the ball, short passing, take fewer risks, shoot less often, dribble less. So yeah, dribble less and run wide doesn't really work well together, but I still want them to pass above anything else. If you cannot run wide, then do not try to dribble your man. Then pass it to someone else. Maybe the complete wing back or back to the half back or whatever. Do not take the risk of dribbling. I don't want. I don't want to see it. We don't have any good dribblers anyway. He's like a dribbling three, right? We don't want to see that. Um, on the other side, pretty much the exact same thing, except from this guy is allowed to go to go further forward on, of course, attack duty. Also run wide with the ball. So other than that, exactly the same. So that's the two midfielders, and then we have our winger. He is exactly the same as last season. Shoot less often. Easy to understand. He's a winger <laughs> on attack. We got an attack. Uh, I think that's the same as the last season as well. No, that's not true. Did I change something here? I don't remember. To be honest, I don't remember. But uh, yeah, attacking midfielder, take more risk, shoot less often. Fairly standard stuff. Again, something that could change depending on what happens further down the midfield. But I'm fairly happy with that right now. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, I have actually put cap in there. This is what I was thinking might be our best uh, option in the first game. If everyone was injury free and you know, all that. So Rochas is actually not even playing down here because of the halfback. So I've even put Rochas up here. So the two guys... I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's... I, th I think I'd rather have Daniel Cap up here instead of, uh, what is it called, Rosas, because I feel like Cap is better suited or just have done better inside the inside the preseason. But yeah, um, and up front, of course, the pressing forward to the left here. Uh, so it is an asymmetric system, but not very asymmetric. Uh, asymmetric. This is just leaving gaps for the winger to, what we saw last season, is leaving gaps for the winger to run into and get some good shots in, right? That is what I'm looking for, as the same as last season, what we, what we saw him do the entire last season. That is what this is going to do, and also making sure that the complete wingback, someone really easy to uh, to to hit with his crosses, uh, being on the left-hand side. Now, he's not left-footed, if I'm not... Yeah, he's not left-footed, but that is that is what it is. That is what it is. Um, I don't know if any of the other guys up there are actually left-footed, but I don't remember. Uh, Pena, he might be left-footed. Yeah, he actually is. And he might also start in. So uh, that is the uh, that is pretty much the tactic. Is there anything here I was missing? I think the set pieces is exactly the same. Yeah, I think that's about it, guys. That's the tactic for next season. At least how it looks now for, for the next game. So um, this is likely how we are going to go in. I, I, I mean, maybe not with the same personal, but this is the tactic we're going to go in with. So... Um, as, and as you can see here, this is what I kind of started out with. There is uh, this is also I think this is one point uh, saying right here one point eight. So even in this one, which is also a new one compared to last season, it, it's yeah. The, there was a lot of changes of this preseason. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. There was a lot of changes. A lot of asymmetric things going on. <laughs> but it was nice. It was probably the most. Uh, it, it was the preseason that took the longest. This is one and a half day later than the last season, when we ended the last episode. One and a half days later, in real, of course. So it takes quite a long time to get through the uh, preseason, especially with how much I'm playing this game. So <laughs> it's probably along the lines of 10 hours, right? Something like that, right? Playtime. So uh, yeah, it looks... Um, I'm concerned. I, I do have my concerns, especially about the midfield here, how I'm going to set that up and all that. Well, otherwise, and also I'm concerned about leaving gaps uh, behind here. I've seen a couple of goals with the complete wing back not really helping out much when it comes to... And, and if they get in behind us there and this guy's not the quickest in the world, 6 acceleration, 8 pace, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna go for it anyway. <laughs> Unless it's gonna be a very, very, very big problem, then we are likely gonna play something along these lines uh, the entire season. So uh, yeah, there we go. In other news, we uh, we have a senior affiliate now, which is Real Potosi, which is one of the better teams in Bolivia. So that's nice. It's bringing us a total fee of 7.5k. I don't know if we got any of their players on loan. I actually don't think we do. 
but uh, still any money is good because <laughs> clearly it's going downhill right we can see these so yeah it's 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 uh yeah we are almost on 5k in current spending uh, in the wages I don't know if you thought that would not happen with as many players that I have brought in that is of a higher quality than the last season previously. Of course it went up, of course it went up. But we're still in the plus because we have sold a couple of players, but that is likely going to be minus 100k at the end of next season. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm expecting. <laughs> so uh, not great. Um, I, I might be running them into a depth here i I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about it if we look at the projection here it's it's definitely going downhill 89k at the end of that's what they expect and that's probably also what i'm expecting it's um we, we need to win promotion <laughs> we need to get up and get more tickets uh tickets sold next season because otherwise we, we can't really you know um remain at where we are where we are uh, even half of it, even half of it would be too much. So <laughs> that's not great, but um, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't really like to do it, but I think I, 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 I wouldn't say I need to do it. But it's, if you don't improve your team, it's why, why, why are we here? Why are we here? Then why, why didn't I just, you know, retire? <laughs> like that's that's about it, right? Uh, then I might have, well not retire, but uh, what is it called? Um, oh, it is actually called retire. Resign, resign, that's the thing. Then we might as well just have tried to resign instead if that was the case, right? If we didn't try to improve the team. Did I go all in? Yeah, kind of, kind of. We do have a really good team, that's that's definitely the case. Also, we have actually, so that that, that is playing into what I'm trying to say here. Also, we have signed a new contract. They went in for us again. I guess they are afraid of losing us because I have signed a new contract here in the summer uh, as well. Uh, and, and that's actually a two-year deal. Now, there are no any clauses for, um, you know, anyone else coming in for us. So we can still go if we... If someone... Like, okay, so here's the, here's the deal. This doesn't mean that I'm not going to leave if someone is coming in for us. Then we are likely going to leave. But if no one is coming in for us, we could just stay one more season. Um, so 575 wages. So it's... It's getting off. It's you know, it's it's getting off. <laughs> I'm getting more money. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, that's one thing. Also, another thing is um, we doing this preseason. I did get my national B license, so that's great. And uh, we are right now also getting the national A license. So I actually did get the the board to agree with me that getting another license, the third one would be advisable so our stats are also going up so at some stage someone some other team in south america is going to come in for us that's going to happen surely it's going to happen <laughs> so yeah guys i think that's about it for this episode and of course in the next episode we are going to uh, get right into the league here against ferro carril and also atletico Bamacho. i think the league has already started yeah it's uh it already started uh, rosario who is not the worst team in the league anymore, that's for sure. They uh, they have already won game one, and also San Jose, Atletico. Okay, that's nice of them. Uh, I didn't expect that over Nacional or uh, Garcia Greta, but fair enough. So if we take a quick look here at the season preview, we can see we're now 17 in odds to win the league. So the teams to beat here, the teams to beat is still Universitario. They have actually improved their team. They are. Uh, they also beat us two times in the in the friendlies. So I still think that us and Universitario is gonna be top two, right? And I, I kind of expect them to maybe beat us uh, to to the to the number one spot again. But that doesn't really matter. We have already seen the draws. It doesn't really matter if you're number one or two. So I expect us to go up there. Um, but there is one more team that we have to be worrying about, and that is Rosario. And they already won one game. The, they, they could get up there. They had a fairly decent good transfer window with a, a couple of good uh, transfers. So we need to be worrying about... I think that's probably our big, biggest um, you know, worry in the league. It's probably Rosario trying to beat us for that second spot. Um, it could also be... Uh, actually, are they still in our league? Huani? Oh, they are. So yeah, there is a couple of uh, there is a couple of players in there, teams, so to speak. But it could uh, it could be a little bit more tricky this season than the next or the last season to get into the top top two spot. 
But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And uh, yeah, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little preseason. Little. It's about 40 minutes long. More than 40 minutes long. So, <laughs> sorry. But that's how it goes. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And I will, of course, see you in the next season.